Hi, this is Professor Zygmunt with CTS 560 Online. And in this video, I'd like to show you how to use Gauss View to visualize the results of a geometry optimization calculation in order to see the different steps that the program takes along the way from the initial geometry to the final optimized geometry, and then show you how to display the atomic charges that the program calculates. So we open up a Gaussian output file and I will use the formic acid molecule that I mentioned in this week's assignment and that you will have to calculate. And so what I see here if I just open the file is nothing more than the final optimized geometry. So let me go back and show you what you should always do when you open up an output file. You should check the box at the bottom that says read intermediate geometries. So when I check that and then open the file, in the upper left hand corner, I now see the number of steps that it took to reach the optimized geometry. And if I use the up arrow, I can go back to the first structure, which was my initial input geometry, and step through the different changes that the program made in going from the initial to the final optimized structure. So when I look at any of the properties of this molecule, I want to look at the final optimized geometry, which in this case is step number eight. Oops, and I clicked the wrong button, so edit, undo, and I want to go into the inquire mode. So, here's the final optimized geometry, and you can see that there were some changes that the program made as it was calculating the optimized geometry, but now we've got the final form, and of course I can use the inquire button to do things like calculate bond lengths, which appear in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, or I could calculate bond angles between various triplets of atoms, so on and so forth. But for the purpose of this lesson, if we go to results and click charges, then we get different types of charges that can be displayed, and the default is mulligan charges. I find coloring the atoms to be a little bit distracting. It may be useful in some cases, but I usually deselect that. But we do allow the charge numbers to be shown because that's what we want. So I close the window, go back to the display, and now you can see with numerical values to three decimal places the charges on these atoms, complete with a sign if indeed the overall charge is negative. So the red atoms here are oxygens. They both have negative charges. The carbon has a positive, and the two hydrogens also have positive charges. So this is one of the things that you'll need to do in this week's assignment, and I hope that that's helpful.